Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Today is going to be Veteran Maelstrom Arena, that horrible, horrible bane of most people's existence. This is the hardest solo content in the game. It's supposed to be, it's meant to be difficult, and it is. Now, if you've done this a hundred times before, you obviously don't want to watch this video because you're already too good for this. But there are many people out there that can't do this, and I'm going to explain exactly how to go about it. I'm going to show you all the rounds, all the enemies, all the ads, all the mini bosses, all the main bosses, and I'm going to deliberately hold back and show you the mechanics. For the purpose of the video, we are using the easy sort build that's linked in the description. However, I'm not using the majority of the skills in here because I'm just showing you the basics. Most of Maelstrom Arena is about memory mechanics and applying them if you want to use a stamina build a magical build a healer or even a tank setup of some description that is entirely up to you it's not a dps race although of course you can make it faster once you get really good at it here we go now just to keep things simple of course when you first come in here you need to know what these guys are for first of all the little tiny tiny dude there he is the quest guy make sure you pick up your quest otherwise it won't save your progress that's right you do save your progress in here as long as a round is completed and you'll go back to that round if you don't pick up the quest you won't so that's important and this guy here he's your repair merchant he has some trash pots which can be quite expensive but you never know when you might get caught short you have repair kits if you really want to or you can just use him to repair he actually has a same function as every other merchant in the game you can just walk up press repair done that is going to appear every single round that you complete or if you come back to the way shrine so don't worry about getting nuked in here if your armor's getting wrecked you can always repair but just top up on some soul gems and some gold and preferably some food and pots if you can take them with you i would recommend tripods especially as a newer player to maelstrom arena now the trick is to learn where everything spawns of course that will come over time but we're going to show you where they are you can see one here and one at the back try to put your dots down early as the portal appears watch out for these clan fears by the way because they do jump and you need to block those um and that can start some damage off while they're on the other side of the room or as they appear always have something down underneath them just so they can start ticking off that nice damage now every main round to several rounds to each arena there will be a mini boss and this is what you need to be aware of so be very very careful here now this first mini boss is on the far left here as you can see i'm going towards the enemy like i did before but look there's a day drop he needs to be annihilated as soon as possible yes we threw down a death royalty probably a little bit overkill but get rid of him quick the trick to him is if he tries to breathe fire at you, he will actually spit a fireball and it will knock you over. And if he stomps, he'll also stun you backwards as well. So just stay out of his face and if he does fire at you, either dodge roll or block. Now there is a new mechanic now for the rest of the arena. As you can see this circle on the ground, this actually slows you down and does quite a bit of damage. So make sure you just stay out of it, keep your feet moving. Don't sprint everywhere because you'll waste your stamina and you won't be able to dodge roll stuff. So just keep an eye on that and stay away from it. The rest of the time, it's again backwards and forwards through those spawn points. And watch out for the clan fears because they will jump. If they jump at you, you must block. That will stop you being knocked over. Again, basic attacks. Most of the time, I'm using light and heavy attacks. Light and heavy attacks, if you spec for them, are some of the strongest hitting abilities in the game. On nearly every build you see out there, if they're hitting a target dummy... Here's a mini boss, by the way. This is the second one. Watch out for that frontal cone AoE and block his heavy attacks. Um, if you're looking at most people's damage output when they're hitting dummies and stuff like that, you'll notice that light attacks are very, very high up. So don't not use them. Make sure you take advantage of these free abilities, especially in here where you have to sustain for long periods of time. You'll see most of the time I'm just heavy attacking with some dots running. These scamps need to be interrupted, so be careful. And look around the room, you can see a chalice, a shield, an axe, and a speed buff in the form of wings. So the chalice will give you health back every, every second. The shield will reflect projectiles and protect you um the axe will give you an increased damage bonus and obviously the wings are a speed buff each one of those lasts 30 seconds you get them every round use them to your advantage this is the final mini boss he's very very small as you can see literally just a heavy attack with a wall of elements down the ground same for stamina volley down and heavy attack him a couple times he doesn't take very long um if he does take longer because your damage is lower don't worry just make sure you block his heavy attacks now this boss can of course be nuked we're not going to try and show that kind of stuff um, we're going to slow down, stay out of the AoEs on the ground, including the one that is already in the arena. In the meantime, just do what you can and keep your health up. Watch your feet and keep moving around him in the circle if you have to. During the fight, he will spawn ads. Now, this part is crucial. If you don't kill those and he calls them back, he will heal. 
They do have frontal attacks, they do have heavy attacks. The AoEs on the ground will stick your feet to the ground so you'll get stuck. Make sure you move all the time. Don't panic and do kill those adds at all costs. He moved there, as you can see, there are adds. Always kill them because if you're panicking, you won't kill the boss. He'll call them back and he'll heal for each add spawned. That's why that particular fight is actually quite difficult for a tank type build because you do have to have a very low, but you do have to have some damage to kill the adds, otherwise he'll just heal forever. That's probably one of the only DPS checks in here apart from round 5, which we'll explain later. But everything else you can do with about 5k, if that. You don't need a lot of damage. Just take your time, pace your mechanics. Dude you saw at the end there, every single round, there's a chest, there's some loot, there's a soul gem, and of course you can repair if you want to. Now this round, look very carefully, there are some lines going around the room. Three levels of lines actually, one, two, and three. If you look from my character, look to the right, there's three lines and there are some spinners following these tracks. All you need to do is keep an eye on three spawn points. So one here, one in front, and one at the far back on the right. Now, when the enemies spawn from here, obviously, keep up your dots on the ground and do what you can so i generally just put down wall of elements and when they get to the wall of elements instead of recasting it and wasting resources i just heavy attack them while they do that now the first mini boss is now coming up in the far uh spawn point over there the one in the middle now he's very very straightforward you can literally just drop a destro ulti on him and he'll die however if you want to know his mechanics when he gets close he's going to swing heavy attacks and frontal cone effects at you just avoid them so block the heavy stay away from his front if you can they're very, very low health. They're quite easy to manage. But if you do get caught with a heavy attack, you're going to die. Especially if you're taking bleeds from the spinners. Which is something I haven't explained yet. While we get onto this part, because there's three spawn points, three adds. Just keep on them. Those spinners that are going around the room, you can avoid them. Just by wiggling your feet a little bit. But what I would highly recommend is that you keep a heal up at all times. You keep a resistance buff at all times. And try and keep shields up if you're magicka. Or at least dodge roll occasionally if you are stamina. But watch your resources. You can dodge roll the spin to avoid the bleed. But if you get caught, you will still get the bleed. As long as you don't stay in it too long because it will hurt. Um, but you can mitigate it. So your resistance buffs will help. As you can see, this guy's heavy attacking now. The mechanics I explained before. Make sure you block those. The resistance buff will help you a lot. So if you have got access to Major Ward or Major Resolve, which every class has, I would recommend it for this fight. Don't stand in the spinners. If you get caught by it, sure, you get a bleed. If you stay in it, you're dead. If it helps, every single round for you, pick up the chalice, take that healing bonus, and then that will give you a little bit of a buffer, just in case you're not too good with your feet. Every round is quite fast, because only three adds each spawn, one from each corner, if you like, and then a mini boss eventually. There's three spawns of them, then a boss, three spawns of them, then a boss. It's really, really quick. But again, the main problem in here is not the adds, it's more the spinners and watching where your feet are. Again, this guy, like I explained the first time, does do heavy attacks. He does do a frontal cone AoE. Just stay out of his face and you should be just fine. Remember, however, this is the most important thing of all. Apart from keeping up your damage, which is handy, obviously, to kill stuff, you must keep up your buffs. This boss is very straightforward, but people get caught out. He does heavy attacks, frontal AoEs, and nasty, nasty lightning attacks. Now, the lightning attacks happen if you're at range. The frontal stuff will happen if you're close. You can nuke these, but what you're looking for is their health percentages. Around the 75-70%, they're going to sit down. There's three of them, by the way. Then, around sort of 55, 50, they're going to sit down again. 35, 25, so on and so forth. Roughly around those areas. The lower you get them, the more they sit down. You have to go and hit another one that's standing up. And they literally act like whack-a-mole. So one sits down, one stands up, one sits down, one stand up. You can pull them all together if you just run to the back of the room and they all come to you one by one. And then they all stack and eventually you can kill them quickly. But honestly, just go around the room, do one at a time, give them some damage, move on to the next, give them some damage, move on to the next. Remember, if you're at range, they're going to put their hand in the air and fire out loads of light nairies on the ground. In which case, keep moving, watch your feet. If you're close to them, they're going to do this steam effect, stay out of it. Or they're going to heavy attack you, in which case block it or dodge roll it. It's rinse repeat. When they sit down, move on to the next one. One thing to pay attention to though, don't stand close to them while they're sitting down. They have a damage shield on them, you can't damage them, but that also does damage you. So stay away from their feet. There are ways to completely annihilate that. I had to record this twice to make sure I didn't show that. Make sure you understand the mechanics before you try and go hell for leather, because otherwise you might burn out resources and wonder why you're dead. Watch your feet, stay away from their feet when they're sitting down. Hit one, when he sits down, hit the other. Just keep going until they're dead.
Now the next round can be a pain in the butt because there is lightning all over the floor in the water and I don't need to tell you what happens if you put electricity in water. It hurts. But there are three islands. Quite simply, I like to stick to one island and cross my dots across the rest of them. So I tend to stick to this back one over here, but there are three spawn points, one on each island, and there will be stranglers that appear randomly at each island and sometimes in the middle. Whenever you see a strangler, you need to kill it. And if it fires at you, you need to dodge roll because it will fire a nasty spit poison ability at you that will snare you to hell. It makes you really, really slow. So be very, very careful. For the most part, though, dots down and just heavy attack stuff as it gets close. First boss, however, is a Wamasu. I would drop a nuke on this. Save your ultimate for him if you can. But essentially, keep up your heavy attacks, keep up your basic dots on the ground, and keep up your buffs. I would deal with the trash first, but watch out for him when he wiggles and stomps because he's going to hit you really hard and he has a frontal lightning effect as well that you don't want to be standing in front of it's really really painful it's damage over time as well it can be quite nasty he can also knock you over round two is quite straightforward in comparison i mean it's basically the same sort of stuff spawns from every single island watch this green circle by the way it will heal you if you're inside of it but it will also heal them now you are going to see some nasty lamias coming up soon but not just yet just bear in mind look out for the red ones in the meantime, stay out of the front of the snakes because they do heavy attack and knock you over. Now, when a mini boss comes in, there will be lightning coming out of the sky. So you need to be very, very careful to keep your feet moving. Watch out for the red lamias. They, they will stun you. You need to interrupt them or kill them. This boss is kind of a stamsork type dude. He does a heavy attack, which is now coming, and he will hit you very, very hard. So be sure to block it or dodge roll it. And then he'll do an interruptible attack here. If you don't interrupt that, he will burst into loads of power and knock you into oblivion. You'll die. Um, most people can live through it if they're very experienced, but to be fair, it hits pretty hard. So be very careful. Make sure you're out of that or at least interrupt it. Now, the next round, again, watch the stranglers. Either kill them or keep dodging their attacks. Red lamias are primary. These ones here. The ones with the ghosts, if you kill the castle, the ghost dies. But these red ones, they must be interrupted. They must be killed as soon as possible. They are your primary targets. If they stun you, you will moonwalk backwards and you will die. It's a nasty, nasty knockback. It's horrible. Now, again, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward stuff. You've got dots on the ground you have to avoid. You have enemies that you need to kill that come from three different locations. And you now have primary targets, which are your Lamias. So make sure at all costs these die. Do not sprint around the room like a loon because you will run out of stamina and you won't be able to break free. As you can see, the boss just spawned in the room. Which hag type enemy? You've seen probably a few of these in basic content before. Lightning from the sky means you need to keep moving because that's going to continue now, so be very careful. The rest of it, she has a couple of stuns, but she doesn't do anything too dangerous, so just keep your dots down and keep heavy attacking her at most, and you will be able to kill her. Last boss of this round can be a pain, but you have synergies around the room to benefit you. You can pick up the axe for more damage, you can pick up the reflect shield to ping back the stranglers. You could have done that in round one, actually. It's very handy. But stay out of her face. So keep your dots up and stay out of that scream. And if you get caught, break free. When the ads spawn, focus the ads. So get rid of that strangler. Get rid of these tiny ads as well. And if you need to, make sure, of course, you pick up the synergies, especially the health one and especially the shield. Because the shield, remember, will reflect and the health will keep you alive. Now, uh, certain health percentages. So we're talking about 75, then um, 50, and then lower, around 25. These aren't exact, but they're around those types of areas, depending on how quick you burn it ads will spawn and then eventually there'll be no more left and she will actually die but you have to make sure you stay out of her scream watch out for her light attacks as well because it can be quite nasty in conjunction with other aoe damage that you're receiving from other enemies just remember in most content the reason people die is because of ads being ignored don't ignore the ads kill them and don't be afraid to take the synergies this is your run it's solo content no one's going to tell you what to do no one's going to judge you for it you need to get through this yourself and use whatever tools you can that are available. Now, this round can be quite straightforward, although I do see a lot of people mess up on the boss, which don't worry, I'm going to explain everything. A couple of spawn points here. So just make sure, obviously, you've got your dots down for the portals so that they can start taking damage as they come in. Basic stuff again, light attacks and heavy attacks. If you haven't got a load of skills to spam, in fact, it's probably safer because then you can keep your resources up. But just keep your dots down, keep your buffs up. If anything heavy attacks you, which the two-handers will do, make sure you block it. And the flame guys, you can interrupt them if they're channeling, and you can also dodge roll their flame attacks. But if you're quick enough, you can kill them before they do that. This first mini boss, you want to drop a Destro on him or whatever you've got available. But 
going through his mechanics, you can interrupt that mechanic there where he throws a fire across the ground, and you can also block his light attacks just like the basic adds. Now these clockwork sentries that are going around, because this is happening quite quickly, they're very, very low health, but if you don't kill them, they will shield up, they'll enrage, and they'll throw AoEs across the ground. So you have to be very aware of those, so be careful. As soon as you see them, kill them. These guys will nuke you. That blue effect that he was just trying to do, you can interrupt it if you're very fast, and if you're not fast enough, you need to get out of the way of it, otherwise you will die. It's very, very powerful, so be careful of those spheres. For the most part, though, it's a case of letting the enemies come to you. Put your dots down, let them come into them. Don't waste unnecessary resources. These sentries, if they do go into enrage and you can watch your feet and not get nuked by them, you can actually use those to use heavy attacks on and actually get resources back. Even though you're not damaging them, you are still getting resources back. So utilize that as a little bit of a tactic. But above all, they are primary. You do have to get them down as soon as they're available to be hit or able to be hit even. Now, next mini boss is kind of like an overcharger. Very much like the last guy, the, the fire one, but he is lightning instead. He has ranged attacks, he does teleport to you and explode, so just make sure you stay out of that. But for the most part, dots on the ground, heavy attack him, you will be fine. This is even on a stamina build as well. Keep your heels up, dots underneath him, and just heavy attack him to death. Yes, there are other ways you can kill them, but it's the most basic way to do damage, and you don't spend any resources doing so. Obviously, your level and your champion point attribution will um, determine... Uh, how much damage you actually have but the method is still the same there's no if you don't kill it within three seconds you can't pass it that's false two spheres here be very very careful see that blue stuff you don't want to get caught by that so if you've got an ultimate drop it on their heads get rid of them quick if you don't then you just have to pay very close attention and don't get caught by the blue stuff you might want to put crush and shock on or just stay close and interrupt them when they do it just be aware the spheres do heavy attack as well and they also jump and do a stomp on the ground so stay out of that last mini boss Kill the adds first. There's two adds, get them down. Pay attention to sentries spawning in the room as well. He will heavy attack you. He will put a flame breath type effect on you as well, so be aware of that. Just keep your buffs up. You must block that heavy, otherwise you're gonna hit the deck and it will really, really hurt. So you can see there's a sentry beside me. Make sure they die or use them to get resources back for the next round. Again, you could have used the synergies then if you were struggling. So by all means, if you need to, do so. This boss is very simple. Even if it bugs out, don't panic. There's a very simple rule. Stay under him when he's moving. That's it. As you can see, I'm taking zero damage. So if you're putting dots down, place them ahead of him so he walks into them. All I'm doing right now is just keeping up heavy attacks. Look to my right. There is a damage bonus there. You can pick that up. He's about to land on the ground. And there's also a shield at the back there which might protect you. But when he stops, get out. When he's moving, stay under. When he stops, get out. You'll have two adds in the room apart from the sentry. You need to deal with them and you need to stay out of the fire that is landing on the ground. So very simple here. Stay away from the boss, kill the adds, stay out of fire. When he's finished having his little fit, he'll repeat the process and starts running around the room. Remember, if you're under him, it's bugged out. There's no circle, but he is moving. If you're under him, you are safe. If you're away from him, you're not. You will get zapped. So very, very simply put, because we've gone for a nuke here because the mechanics have been shown. While he's moving, stay under, or you're dead. And while he's standing still, get out, or you're dead. That's basically it. And every time he stops, there'll be two adds. Again, don't forget this guy here. You can repair here. You can pick up pots and all that good stuff if you really need to. Now, this is the bane of most people's existence as far as Maelstrom Arena is concerned. This really, really, really horrible frozen round. I'm going to show you how to make it easy on yourself. There are three platforms. There are synergies on each one. Benefits, health, healing, shield, speed, all that good stuff. Speed one's probably going to help you the most. Two spawns to start with on the one you're on. Make sure you kill them as quick as possible. Stay out of the arrow spray and watch out for the two-hander heavy attack. He will turn into werewolf and it will hurt, so be careful. These ice mages are your primary target because they hurt really, really bad. And above all, that troll that I just interrupted, they will randomly spawn throughout the whole fight and go to any island they like. If you don't interrupt them, they will break the platform and all the ice is gone. And I don't need to be the one to tell you this, but I'm going to. The ice hurts. Do not stand in the icy water. You will die if you stay there for too long. This boss is really simple. Heavy attack and dots. But she does morph into a werewolf, so watch out. Her bleed is quite nasty. Interrupt the troll. Always interrupt the troll, whether it be long range or close. You must kill him. 
These guys be very careful. Stay out of the archers AoE and make sure you kill them. But these ogres do enrage and they do hit pretty hard. So just make sure that you're blocking when they try and heavy attack you. Little trick for this. Put your dots in the ice so they run into it. And they take loads and loads of damage on the way. Which means when they get to you, they've got much, not much left. Ice Witch again. Always kill those and always interrupt the troll. Very important that he is interrupted. Never fight the boss over the troll. Never fight the adds over the troll. You can do them all together if you want, but you have to watch out that he doesn't smash the ground. This is quite simple. He will put icicles under the ground to try and hit you. Stay out of them. That's basically it for that boss. He's very straightforward. It's just that people panic about the ice. Dead troll. If he got there, interrupt him. Now, just note, by the way, when you are going from platform to platform, also stay away from these ice guys. You can kill them from behind, but don't stand in front of their face because they will AOE you. If you're going from pad to pad, jump before you land on the pad. If you try to run at it like it's flat ground, sometimes you'll make it, sometimes you won't. Usually you'll get stuck and you'll be in the ice for too long and die. So don't do that. Very important here, keep your eyes on the prize. Always kill that troll. He must not break the platform. If he does, first of all, you're going to be one platform down, which is dangerous. And secondly, you're going to spawn a horrible ice nerd and she's going to kill you in the face. Obviously, the Atronarch is the biggest target in the room, but you want to make sure that the ice mages are killed. For some reason, ice damage in PvE against a player is insane. You want to make sure those mages are your primary target. And again, troll, interrupt him and kill him. He doesn't have a lot of health, but you must bash to interrupt him. If he slams for more than 10 seconds, in fact less than that, uh, he will smash the platformer and you're screwed. Two giants here, very simple, stay out of their face, kill the ice witch, when they do their big, big AoE kind of swing in front of them, you'll see that smoke going across the ground or the dust or whatever you want to call it. Um, if you get caught by that, you'll get knocked back and it does a large amount of damage, so you have to be very, very careful. That was pretty straightforward. Heavy attack stuff as it comes to you. Um, this particular boss is kind of like the last two that you saw. It's a mini boss again, but he hits a bit harder. Make sure you get rid of the witch and stay away from the front of his face. Now... He will spin around a little bit, but as soon as he starts doing a swing, as you can see there, you can literally get behind him and he's not a problem. I would recommend using your ultimate there because on the next boss, you do not want your ultimate right now. Now, this is very important. The pad with the speed buff. This is where I start. Do a little bit of damage for the boss and watch out to your right hand side because that is where the adds are going to spawn. Kill the adds, get off the boss. This is crucial. Kill the adds. Do not over nuke the boss because it will try to smash a platform and you will get overwhelmed with ads. When it glows red, get off. It's going to break the platform. Now run to this pad where the healing chalice is. Take that if you need it. In fact, you can take the speed buff to get to here. You need to kill the Nerid and the troll. Leave the boss alone. Yes, he'll take passive damage, but you want to make sure you gently push the boss so the ads, which would have been on our right when we were facing him, which are now here, must die. So, stay out of his front, watch out for his knockbacks and his fears, because you do need to break free from those, and focus these two adds. The boss has been pushed by accident, he's smashing the platform, but luckily for us, the adds are dead. As you can see, there's a shield and an axe. You've got two options here. You can kill all the adds, and then deal with the boss later, or you can go for the nuke and pick up those synergies. You'll reflect all damage, you'll do extra damage, all you've got to watch out for is heavy attacks, knockdowns, and fears. This is the point when you can use your ultimate. This is the part where you have to obviously watch your feet, but you can just go for the kill. If you try and do that on the other two platforms, the boss will squash them too early. You will get overwhelmed with too many adds and you won't be able to manage it. So, pad one with the speed buff, kill the adds, push the boss. Pick up the synergy if you need to to run to the next pad. Pick up the health synergy if you want to on the pad you're now on. Remember again, kill the adds, then the boss. Last pad, pick up the two synergies, go for the kill. So, Adds boss, adds boss, then kill it. It's very important that you do that. If you panic and overburn, you will fail. Now, just be aware, of course, the trolls are in the room still. They are primary. Make sure you interrupt them. Make sure you kill them. This one is quite straightforward, but you've got to keep moving. All these little totems on the ground are covered in webs. You need to find a horver, which is very, very low health. And when you kill it, it will burst. If you burst it near the webs, it will explode and kill it. If you burst it on the ground, nowhere near them, you're going to have to pick up a synergy in order to throw at the webs to break it. And this is a good example of placing them. Pop, there it goes. If that doesn't happen, run over to it, pick up the synergy before it dies. Because the actual synergy on the ground will explode eventually if you don't pick it up. 
These adds are quite straightforward. The mages will charge at you with a nasty lightning attack that actually teleport to you. And the archers need to be interrupted or killed. And the melee guys will pin you to the ground. So just be very careful that you either interrupt them or obviously deal with them before they get a chance to do so. The wasps are not too bad. Just watch out because they do charge at you. So you need to get out of that. And this is a very important mechanic. These spiders will come for you and there is a gold totem as long as you've got some uncovered. You run to it, the spiders will chase you, they'll reach it, and they'll run away. If you don't do that, they'll chase you and you'll die. That Flesh Atronarch does spawn that as a mini boss there. This is a good example of the synergy, by the way. Pick it up, fling it. Make sure you hit it. Uh, the Atronarch just does a heavy attack. You can either dodge it or block it. Apart from that, pretty much stand still and fight him. Again, very good tactic for this. Put your dots down, let them come to you. If you can help it. If they're ranged, obviously, they're going to be a bit tricky. But if they're melee, they'll come straight to you anyway. They'll run into your dots. And you can obviously do damage to them while they're in your space rather than you chase them around the room. As you saw then, we uncovered all of the totems. And this freezes the room and any potential spawns. So that makes things a lot, lot easier for yourself for a few seconds. So you can plan tactically as to when you do or don't release these webs. But... There are going to be spiders spawning eventually when you don't really know they're doing it. They can sometimes sneak in and they will cover them back up again. So if you think you've got that gold totem there and it's all safe and nice and shiny and when the spiders spawn you can just run to it. If you're not paying attention and a spider spawns and covers that up, you're going to die. So make sure that you kill the extra tiny, tiny ads that come in when you're not looking. Now, the Horvers again, remember they are your primary... Uh, mechanic that you've got to pay attention to. You must uncover the webs. But the rest of the adds are quite straightforward. The scorpions do a heavy attack. You need to block. The lightning guy, you've seen a few of those already. Just make sure you get rid of them. And of course, the mini bosses are now starting to spawn. This one, we got the spiders and the boss. So stop focusing the boss. Get those spiders gone. Now you focus the boss. But this boss has a negate bubble mechanic. So after you push him a little bit, he will actually drop a negate on your head, much like the sorcerer's negate bubble. Now, this is something that you need to pay attention to. Don't go bursting him to hell and then get caught in it, because all your magic will be gone. And I don't mean your magic bar, I mean your spells that you've already cast. They'll be turned off, including the ultimates. So wait for him to drop the negate bubble, then go for the kill. Just be aware, of course, he does throw loads of lightning down off the sky. If you see it on the ground, get out of it. Don't stand in it. It will kill you. It goes without saying. That mechanic obviously is now within the entire arena and it's constantly coming down from the sky. So you do have to keep moving now and be very, very careful that you don't get caught in it because otherwise you will pop. Spiders again. Loads and loads of red spiders. Run to the back of the gold post and they will run into it. And then they will run away. If you don't, they won't. So just pay attention. There's the spider. Get rid of that. Atronarch is very straightforward. You've seen him before. He does a heavy attack. That's pretty much it. He's not that scary. Stay out of his face, block if he heavy attacks. Don't run around like a loon because you'll run out of resources. Always break those. Now again, you've had enough horvers to cut, uncover all of the totems. Or whatever you want to call them. So everything's frozen. That lurcher I'm going to leave on purpose because I want to see his mechanics. But you could have just killed him right there. Now he has a heavy attack which you need to block. He has some nasty single target hits. Which are quite stressful if you haven't got your buffs and heals up. But also, he has another mechanic that needs to be interrupted. Now, he's being a bit awkward and not doing it right now, but here's the heavy. What he does is he starts shaking violently and loads and loads of um, kind of rock effects fly everywhere. And if you're within that vicinity, you will die. So just be very, very careful with that. Make sure you interrupt him. If not, just stay out of his way. This mini boss does two major mechanics. That first one was a heavy attack, obviously, which you need to block. And the second one is he starts casting some poison at you and you need to dodge roll it. Otherwise, you'll have a nasty effect on you. Apart from that, he has a frontal cone, which you can very easily stay out of that is why you have to make sure you hit the synergies properly because if not you'll miss so be careful there again lots of melee stuff keep them close but if you've got spiders run for the gold always go for gold otherwise you are in trouble you have to make sure they run away you can kill them eventually but by that point people are normally dead keep moving make sure you keep your dots down at all times there's the interrupt that mechanic there make sure you interrupt that Keep your dots down at all times and always keep your resistance buff up. Don't run out of magicka or stamina all the way to zero because you are going to die. So just relax. Keep moving. As you'll notice, I'm not actually sprinting around the room. I'm just running a little bit here and there to make sure that I keep moving. If you sprint, you've got nothing for dodge roll or blocks. Now, if you can plan tactically, you can make it so that all these totems get uncovered at the same time for this boss spawn. You can go for a kill. But we're going to do mechanics. So... 
Basically, stay on her as much as you can. Watch out for the frontal AoEs and stay out of that big pop. You can pick synergies up for this if you want for extra damage and or reflect. And for health as well. Now, she will spawn a smaller version of herself, a little minion. You have to kill that because they are tethered together. Um, basically, she gets stronger while that is alive, so you must kill it. Here's the totems. This is when the boss can sit down. We could go for a full nuke here, but we're not going to. I'm just going to demonstrate how easy it would be to do so. Let's back away. Now, under 50% health, sometimes a little bit higher, she will spawn a Lurcher, which you've seen already. Remember, block the heavy attack, interrupt if it starts doing its little fit, and obviously deal with that first before the boss. But she also has an interrupt mechanic. If she starts channeling, bash her, otherwise you're going to get hit really, really, really hard with some frontal lightning. And all the way through the fight, she is casting some long-ranged poison attacks, which just hit me there. What I would say you do for this particular mechanic apart from obviously keep your resistance and heals up is take the shield synergy once her health gets low because that effect does get stronger and stronger especially if she is already enraged when she's bright red so interrupt that kill the adds and focus her as much as you can while keeping the horvers um close to the totem so they can be uncovered spiders will cover the totems horvers will break them interrupts need to be done Ads need to be killed, and you need to make sure that you don't panic. You do have to run around a lot. The lightning is coming from the sky, but just relax. Go run in a circle if you have to, but just focus on the mechanics above all. The main reason people mess up on that boss is because they fail to interrupt or they fail to kill the ads. Those are your two key points you must pay attention to. The rest of it should be fairly straightforward, but the longer the fight, the stronger she does get. Now the round you've all been waiting for. The horrible mushrooms. That's right, Finn. I said mushrooms. He hates it when I say mushrooms. They're plants, apparently. There are veggies around the room, four of them, in fact. And if you get caught by one, it will pop and it will put a nasty poison dot on you. And you have to run to either one of the two poles of the arena in order to cleanse. This here, pop. Get caught by that, you're going to die rapidly and you have to get into here. Be careful. Now, these spawns are pretty straightforward. You're going to have lots of little trash enemies that come in first of all some will stun some will hit with melee attacks some with range the ones you need to focus on above all are these guys these archers need to be killed as soon as possible they'll put a nasty arrow spray which also is as deadly as the popping mushrooms and also they will try and do a snipe effect on you which you need to interrupt or avoid now the mini boss comes in quite quickly it's a troll very simply put dodge that rock if you don't you get knocked down doesn't hit too hard, but at low health, he does enrage, and now he starts hitting even harder. So just be very, very careful. As you can see, he has a bit of a fit and starts pounding the ground. You don't want to be caught by that. Yes, we deliberately showed that. We stopped hitting him. But that's something you need to be aware of, because later on, you'll have two of them. The next round, now we get the crazy ladies. These pop the mushrooms. You must kill them. There are four corners of the map, and they can spawn randomly at any of them. When that happens, the whole room will constantly pop with mushrooms, then spawn more, pop with mushrooms, then spawn more. Do not get caught. Primary targets in this round are, of course, these archers. They must die as soon as possible, but never put any target above the Venom Callers, aka the Crazy Ladies. I think Delta used to say that, actually. I think that's where it came from. It's very important that you deal with those. The rest of these adds can stun and do minor damage, but these must die because they literally nuke the room with you in it. Now, if they're not in the room, the mushrooms sit there happy unless you go too close to them. If they are in the room, it's trouble. Now, this mini boss here, again, has got some small adds which distract you to start with, but you have to avoid the rock or you'll be knocked down. Very straightforward mini boss. Keep your damage on him. Don't get hit too hard by his big, big attacks. And when he enrages, make sure that you're not standing there when he stamps the ground. Venom Callers can spawn between rounds as well and on bosses, so make sure you kill them. Now, the easiest way to deal with these rounds generally is to stay in the middle of the room, put your dots down and let them come to you. But remember, archers are primary. Of course, you can take the shield synergy to ping back the arrows at them. So when you get overwhelmed, that's actually a very helpful tactic to you. So don't be scared to do so if you've still got that synergy in the room. Now, here's a tip for this mini boss. There are two archers in the room. As soon as you kill one of them, the boss is going to spawn. So you can either pace them and get them down evenly or you can just nuke one and then the other. It's up to you or both together if you can. But when you do the whammers, it will spawn. You have to dodge the initial attack because you'll spit lightning at you and you need to stay out of this because that lightning breath will kill you even outside of its cone. Now, here's the tip for this. When he starts wiggling, he's powering up. Watch for the stomp. I'm going to stay back on purpose so you can see this. Make sure you dodge that if you can. If not, block it. This here, 
as you can see very clearly, you need to get in those gaps. If you get caught by any of those AoEs, you're going to die. So do not stay close to that Wamasu. Remember, Venom Caller must die. The Wamasu can be incredibly stressful. Because of his size, is actually quite quick. He covers a lot of ground. But you do not want to be standing in that AoE. The further you are away, the better because the easier it is to manage. Now, of course, archers go first. They must die. Again, reflect shields can help you. So make sure you use them if you are struggling with multiple archers, especially this round here where you've got more than one. So be very, very careful. Interrupt that. Otherwise, it's going to one-shot you. Yes, you can dodge roll it if you can time it perfectly, but that's tricky and a little more advanced. Venom Caller, crazy lady, get rid of her. Now, three archers is deadly. You want the reflect synergy for this. If not, you need to keep on interrupts. Keep dodging certain attacks that they come in, especially the conal AoEs, and make sure you get these down one by one by one very, very quickly if you can. If not, you're just going to have to make sure that you focus fully on your survival. Maybe even pick up the heal synergy. Now, this is the problem with the Venom Caller. Pop, where am I going? I'm stuffed. I need to get to here quick. If I don't get there within about three seconds, maybe four, with heals running, I'm dead. On a stamina DPS, even if you vigor, you're going to be dead. You have to be very, very fast and get to those safe spots. This, of course, is a mini boss. You've seen the troll before, but we've now got two. So just hug them up together. Keep your dots down. Don't get caught by the rocks. And when they enrage, make sure you stay out if their uh, ground pound kicks in. Now, this boss is very, very simple. If you're using Boundless Storms, activate it once and do not touch it again until after the next phase, which is coming up. You can block his attacks, you can block his ground pound, and you can block his bite. The further away you are, of course, he will start spitting stuff at the ground, and if he does that, just stay out of it. For the most part, just do your damage and just block his attacks. If you get stunned, don't worry, just break free. Now, there's two of these in the room. See that ad? There's two of them. You want one dead, not the other. So here, I'm going to stand still in this bubble. The reason I'm standing in the bubble because his scream will kill me. If I interrupt him, he will still be enraged and he'll kill me and he'll stop screaming. If I kill that ad too early, I'm exposed and I'm going to die. So only activate Boundless Storms on a Sorcerer or anything AoE based once at the beginning of the fight and let it run off so that phase you don't accidentally kill the ad. The rest of the fight is rinse repeat. Kill the Venom Callers as they spawn, kill the boss and block his attacks. And you don't really need to dance around the room. You can actually stay as close to him as you like and just make sure you block the big stuff. Just be warned, his bite does put a big bleed on you and it does really, really hurt. You can repeat this process as many times as you like. It doesn't matter how much damage you've got as long as you don't accidentally kill the second ad. You want to kill him after the scream is over. Couple of notes, by the way. If you don't kill him, which you shouldn't do, and you do successfully live through the bubble phase, you will have to kill that ad and you will have to know his mechanics. The ad can jump at you and do lightning bursts. It's really painful. Focus him, not the boss. Also, two problems. Sometimes, if you're inside the bubble and safe, you will get a mushroom under your feet and there's nothing you can do about it. That is RNG. One more thing to know, if he slams the ground when you kill one ad, he's now enraged and that ability is now considered as an enraged ability, so make sure you get out of the way of it. Now, this round is actually not too bad in comparison to the last one. You've got a few adds and a few mechanics, but they're pretty straightforward. Start with, you've got a flame atro or two. Actually, there's one at the back there as well. This Daedra guy must be blocked when he heavy attacks you. Tip number one, do not run away from him. If you run away, he's going to chase you, crit rush you to death. This second pull is quite harsh. You've got two healers and, important of all, this uh, flame shaper type guy does... Uh, an effect where he puts his staff in the air and loads of fire comes out, you must interrupt it because he cannot be reflected. It really, really hurts. Most people die in this round because of that. You've seen this enemy before. Block the heavy attack, don't run away. Just note, of course, the healers can be interrupted, so they don't have to actually just sit there and heal all day. Mini boss, by the way, Totem is his weakness. Kill it and he will be exposed. Now you can hit him. Watch out at the front because he does that. You need to get in the gaps. And if he gets too close to you, he will try and stun you occasionally. He's got some rather large melee attacks, so... Either block them or get out of them and stay out of the big AoEs. He's quite straightforward. The safest place to be with him is out of his face. You'll get three of those throughout the entire arena, actually. Now, the next spawn is very, very straightforward. This is where the Flame Shaper is. Focus him first. Doesn't matter how long it takes you to kill him. Make sure if he does something stupid, you must interrupt him. Otherwise, you're dead. Three Shalks down here. You can move these to another position, but I tend to just put the dots down and just let them walk into it quite straightforward but if they start pulsing out fire you must interrupt them 
Another spawn of them here. And at the same time, you've got two healers coming your way. These do have to be killed, and they do have to be interrupted if they start healing, because otherwise you'll just have enemies there forever. But make sure you focus these quite soon, because otherwise you're going to end up with a boss in the room, as we just saw, and they'll heal the boss. Now, you want to deal with these two flame atronarchs first. They're not too problematic. They don't hit that hard, but they are an annoyance. So get rid of those before going for the totem, unless they're on top of it. As soon as you get rid of the totem, the boss is exposed. Same as before, stay out of the AoEs, keep your buffs and heals up because he does punch quite hard. You can drop a Destro on him or whatever ultimate you've got to get rid of these. I would personally save your ultimates for the bosses. Remember, don't be afraid to use those synergies. There are meteor type uh, volcanic rock effects flying out of the sides that are landed on the ground now, so you do have to be very, very careful of those, so watch your feet. Remember to block the two-handers and kill and interrupt the healers. There's another spawn of these here. They will both heavy attack you, so make sure you haven't run out of stamina at this point so you can block the attacks themselves. And remember, do not run away because if you do, they will crit rush you in the back of the head and you will die. If you're not blocking, it will really hurt. Totem, exposed boss, primary target. Always get the flame shaper. Learn that lesson early. Don't try and get too brave and go for the boss. Always kill the flame shaper first. I would not recommend using an ultimate here. I would save it for the next round. So be careful. If you're not feeling too brave, of course, nuke him. If you are, then I would save it because this now is the hardest round in this arena. There's a spawn there and there's a spawn there. Two flame shapers. You want to nuke one with an ultimate or a negate bubble to pin him down so he can't cast. And you want to focus the other while making sure the healers are interrupted. If those two are both attacking you at the same time, and they both put their staffs in, staves in the air at the same time, and they both do that Flame Shaper stuff, you're going to die. Now, once they're all dead, you will get two Daedra two-handers. Again, you know you can block these heavy attacks, but bring them over to this totem here, and kill them where they stand. Once they die, there will be a spawn, and this is the mini boss and two healers. As soon as you can see them, dodge roll. That will avoid that first chain. If she pulls you in, you're going to die. So be careful. I would focus both healers at this point, but you need to tote them down to make her exposed to damage. So, of course you want to do as much damage to her as possible. Do not use ultimate if you can help it. But stay away. As you saw then, she dropped a banner. Now this is very, very important. If you touch that banner, you're going to die. If she is in the banner while she's damaging you, you're going to die. The soon as she drops it, she's going to try to chain you again, so you need to dodge roll it or block it. So basically, keep away from her as much as possible till that banner's down, then pull her away from it. Now, this is tricky. There are three totems in the room. You should have learned this mechanic already. The totem exposes the boss. So, we're going to go around and kill all three of them. Then the boss is going to go into a fit of despair and we can hit him. But, there are adds. As you can see here, Flame Shaper. Whatever you want to call him. We're going to call him Flame Shaper because there's loads of enemies like that in the game. That is your primary target. You can hold out on the totem until that guy's dead if you want. Or kill them together. This is your window of opportunity. This is where you do your rotations, where you just drop death royalties or whatever you've got. You can go mad if you want, but we're not going to. Yes, you can one bang that boss, especially if you've got all your, your buffs and bonuses on. We're going to go around again and kill the totems. Remember, every time he goes back to being immune, you can just kill three totems and you're fine. You'll notice that I'm keeping distance from him. The reason for that is if you get too close, he's going to cleave you and you're going to go flying. He hits really, really hard and it's not nice to try and keep breaking free from that stuff. Flame Shaper again. Get rid of him then carry on. It's relaxing if you focus on it in that manner. If you panic, it is not. Again, he's exposed. Take your time. Get him down as and when you feel like it. And we rinse repeat, but with a twist. After the fourth round, the fourth lap of unlocking his uh, exposure, if you like, it gets worse. So the longer you take, the more progressively difficult this gets. As you'll see now, round three we're on, he's now developed a new ability. He has a chain, just like the last boss, which pulls you in and is awful. So you want to go again. Make sure that you deal with the add, get rid of him, and then focus the boss. Again, the trick to that is to obviously get rid of the add before you expose the boss, because then you've got a window uh, to do more damage. Round four, watch this. See that? Look for a gap. If you don't look for that gap and you don't get in it, you're going to get stunned and then burnt and then die. So now, every single round that you fail to kill this boss, you will have to deal with that mechanic. He does throw fireballs, he does, does, does kind of cleave effects. 
Now he's got chains. Now he's got his outburst. He's about to do it again, but obviously we pinned him. Be very, very aware of that. Also, during these fights, you can, of course, end up with flame atronux, which aren't too stressful. Just put the dots down and kill them. Um, and always, always kill the flame shaper. All the time. This is a point where you might want to repair, by the way, because you're now coming up to the last round. So check your charges, check your food, check your potions. Make sure you repair. Now, this round is not as difficult as you might think, but the one thing that kills people is panic. So relax. You're going to have three adds most of the time. Nightblades, DKs, Templars. Some will heal, some will jump from stealth and stun you. Others will try and whip you and breathe on you. So bring them in as close as you can. You also get archers as well. And if they're ranged, obviously deal with them later. Make sure you interrupt them if you need to. And if they're close, bring them all in and keep your dots down. Don't spam it. Just keep your dots down and do damage while they're inside your damage. Take advantage of the fact that you've got tick damage going over here. You don't need to spam stuff. They can either be killed or interrupted or both. So pay attention to those. And of course, these gold ghosts, don't let the enemies touch them. If you touch the blue ones, you're going to take damage. If you touch the gold ones, you'll collect them up to three. If you get three of them, you'll be able to stun the room with a synergy. Now, this is Jeff. He's your first mini boss. He must die. When he breaks into fire, he will breathe at you. He'll get a nasty dot on you and you will die. And if you run away, the dot will stay with you as long as he is alive. He is your primary target no matter what. Every single round from now on, if you see Jeff, kill him. The trick to him is to stay close and run around in a very tight circle so he can't actually catch you with his flame breath. Otherwise, you're going to have some trouble. Keep your buffs up. Keep your heals up. Always kill Jeff. I would personally recommend making sure you take some of these synergies, especially the healing one. And, of course, the damage one if you need to. Collect those gold ghosts. There's your synergy for the stun. Now coming. Now, what you also should do is drop your ulties on him. Save your ultimates just for Jeff. As you can see, everyone in the room is stunned. That is the reward for taking a synergy after picking up three gold ghosts. If the enemies pick up three gold ghosts, they will be buffed to hell. And if you do that on the last boss, he's going to nuke the entire room and you might as well basically start again. Here comes Jeff. What have I saved up? Death royalty. Nuke. Jeff. Do not run away. Stay in a tight circle if you can help it. If you run away, you're just going to consistently take damage. We have a new enemy now. We've got the Ogrims to deal with as well as the Ad. So watch out for being stunned by those. He died very quickly because there was already a lot of damage on the ground. But basically, he will bang his chest when he goes low health and start healing. You can interrupt that. But also, he'll run towards you and he will knock you backwards. So just be very, very careful. Apart from that, it's fireballs and staying out of stupid. Jeff again. Tight circle, don't let him get you. The closer you are, the better. Although most people run away from stuff and think it's safer. It's really not. That healer can be interrupted, as you can see. Because his heals are quite high, especially if you've got low damage. So just make sure that you pay attention to those. This is kind of a mid-mini boss. You do need to take him down quite quickly because the next spawn can overlap. But basically, he will chain you to pull you in. He will heavy attack you, which you need to block. And he'll put down a big, big burst of AoE on the ground, which you need to stay out of. Apart from that, obviously, focus him. And then once the Ogrim is in the room, the Ogrim's next. Watch out for the adds because they will try and stun you and they will whip you in all nastiness. As you can see here, we've got a bit more mechanic uh, awareness. We can see more stuff for the Ogrim now. He does some nasty flame attacks on the ground, which are quite simple. You just stay out of them. And there's the interrupt mechanic, but he died. Jeff, you know the rules. Kill Jeff. Doesn't matter how long it takes you to kill him. Don't let him catch you with a flame effect. Failing that, you've got synergies, you've got ultimates. Utilize them as and when you see fit. Never go after anything else other than him while he's in the room. This lesson is crucial for the last boss. And it doesn't matter how many excuses people have. Always kill him first. This round, you have these slow-moving enemies. Here's a synergy again. We've got three ghosts. We can freeze the room, which I'm about to do in a moment. These glowing green slow-walking enemies must die. Because if they get to the middle, you can see there's a Daedric symbol there. They'll start kind of filling that up like a, like a pot. And every second that any of them is there, there's a Jeff, by the way, make sure you get him down. Every second that they are channeling to that pot, it's filling up. Doesn't matter if one goes there for two seconds and fills up and then dies, and one goes there for three seconds and fills up and dies. That pot remembers how much energy is in there. And when it gets full, a big bone colossus comes out. You don't want that to happen, so kill them. But I am going to show you what it looks like. The rest of these rounds are quite straightforward. You'll have two adds every spawn apart from the last one. And you will have to deal with these glowing, walking, I'm going to kill you enemies. The last round, of course, is what we're on now. You get an Ogrim as well. So be aware that he will fire projectiles at you. So be careful. 
You can, of course, stun the room. So I'm saving this up on purpose. These guys here are now filling this up, as you can see. We'll get rid of one of them. You want rid of both, by the way. Don't copy this. Kill them. Over the entire round, the purpose of these enemies is to fill that up. And this is exactly what we're now going to demonstrate. If this does happen, you are in serious trouble. But I'm also going to show you that it's not over. I'm going to show you what to do if this does happen. As you can see there, you want to get rid of that guy, so kill him. The Bone Colossus is coming in. If you're lucky enough, you can pin him. Which is nice, and now you can go for the nuke and kill him. But we're not going to do that. I'm going to let him get back up again and show you what effects he has that you will need to figure out once that happens. So he'll do a couple of melee attacks maybe, and then he'll do this. And you can run around in on a nice big circle if you want. Pick up the speed buff and the healing buff because you're going to bloody need it. And you need to stay alive. If you can stay alive, well done. If you can't, you got to start the round again. So you don't want him out. If you don't want to face him, kill those ads. They are your primary targets. Although, Jeff does always come first. Now, this last round is quite tricky. You're going to get a day drop to start with, which you need to kill. Most people drop a death royalty on him or whatever ultimates they've got. And then forget that Nigel's now coming. Nigel's a titan, by the way, if you didn't know that from the live streams. Take the shield synergy to reflect his fire effects. Take the damage synergy and take the health one if you want. Failing that, you're going to have to do the mechanics. Which means keep your dots up, keep your damage up. Block his heavy attacks. And you can dodge his fireballs if you want or just simply block them. Now, when he gets to a set amount of health, he will do a jump. And then he's going to do what the last boss on the fire round did when you get to four phases. This. You need to wiggle between those or you're going to get stunned and burnt to a crisp. For the rest of the arena, however, just make sure you don't hug the edges because there are um, rocks flying in from the side that will kill you. They deliberately want you to stay away from the edges. Whether you kill the boss early or whether he does his fire phase, you will be greeted with three adds twice by the way you get two phases of them they will stun you so be very very careful you've got healers as well and you've also got two archers in fact in the first one which really really hurt now when the ads have gone the first two phases of ads in fact you will be greeted with the final one which is the ogrim so just be very careful you can actually use this guy to get back some resources unless your damage is very high in which case you're probably going to nuke him but um you can just use him as a heavy attack dummy for the time being and get all of your resources back ready for the final battle which is now coming now on the west there, there is a shield. You can take that for the first phase if you want. Fail on that, save it till the end. But this is the basic side of it. He's going to throw a skull at you. You can dodge it or block it. Then, once he teleports, if you don't get him to 75% or lower, he's going to do this nasty burst. You've got a healer in the room that needs to be killed, and he will do this interruptible attack. That will constantly throw skulls at you until he is finished or you are dead. In the meantime, Jeff will spawn. You must kill Jeff. Get off the boss. Kill that ad. Once he's down, pay attention to this clan fear. He hurts. You've got Lich Crystals coming out of the ground. And what you need to do is avoid the damage and make sure the clan fear dies on this lit up pad. There's three in the room. Only one of them light up. Once you're up here, he's going to throw a skull at you once. And you need to kill these crystals. Dodge roll or block the skull. And keep moving because meteors are coming down. Now, he will then put up a wall which you need to hide behind to protect yourself until he explodes. And then you're safe again. There are three crystals up here that need to be killed. You need to keep heals up all the time because you're constantly taking damage of time while you're up here. Dodge roll the skull. Now, keep an eye on the boss if you can because you can do it once more. Every phase is going to do it twice now. So you look at him putting his hands together. Three, two, one, dodge. As soon as he puts his hands together, count down. Three, two, one, dodge. Even if he hasn't fired it yet, you're going to time it perfectly. Watch the wall. You need to get behind it while keeping damage up or healing. Do not chase it the opposite direction because it's going to go faster than you. Make sure that you meet it. Hands together. Three, two, one. Dodge. Now keep eyes on the floor. Do not stand still. You'll get caught in a meteor. Three, two, one. Dodge. Every single time. You can block it. But if you block it, you run the risk of standing still or moving too slowly. And the meteor will land on your head and stun you. This interruptible mechanic again is back. This is very simple. Relax. Block or dodge the skull. Interrupt his interruptible mechanic. And stay out of the AoE. The rest of the time, you don't even need to look at him. Kill the ad. Pick up the ghost. Look at the boss. Watch his mechanics. If he fires a skull, you dodge or block. If it's AoE, you stay out of it. And if it's interruptible, you interrupt. There's a skull. Dodge it. Relax. Pick up the ghost. Interrupt him. There's a new ad. Make sure you obviously kill the ad. Every third ghost is going to be a Jeff in the room. Leave the boss alone. You can stun him if you've got three ghosts. Leave the boss alone. Kill Jeff. Now focus the boss. Relax. Everything you've just seen, you're going to duplicate. Dodge a skull. Stay out of AoE. Interrupt him. Pick up ghost. 
Kill Ad, rinse repeat. That's all you've got to do. Don't let the ghost touch the boss because he'll get stronger, but that's it. So, very simply put, interrupt, dodge the skull or block it, stay out of trouble. Kill the ads, pick up the ghosts, rinse repeat, that's it. The biggest problem with that boss is people panic. And the one thing that makes everybody fail for their first few times is they panic, their adrenaline kicks in, and they try to over nuke the boss instead of killing Jeff. Here's the problem. If that boss has got 10k health left and you think your execute is going to kill it, you'll fire it, it probably won't crit, the boss won't die, and Jeff will kill you. Doesn't matter how much health the boss has got left, even if it's 1k, kill Jeff at all costs. Just remember, VMA is not a DPS race. You don't have to have 8 million DPS to be able to do it. You can do it with 5. Mechanics are key, and also, so is not panicking. Pay attention to the mechanics, and you can just relax and go through there very slowly. But if you start panicking and run around a room like a headless chicken, you are going to die and get what I call Maelstrom Shuffle Syndrome, which is basically where you just keep running and running and running and running in circles. Now, just remember, of course, the build is not what's going to make you go through VMA. Yes, there are certain things that can help you and certain things that can give you more survivability or maybe even some free procs, but above all, 90% of Maelstrom Arena is your memory and your ability to follow the mechanics or adapt versus the situation. So practice makes perfect. So hopefully that wasn't too boring. Hopefully that was helpful. And of course, thank you very, very much for watching. I huge appreciate the support. If you're not subscribing already, please do hit that button. It is free. Don't forget the notification bell, of course, so you know when I'm uploading videos. Also, if you'd like to support outside of the channel, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website, zynodgaming.com, where all the written guides are as well. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Best of luck in there, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.